Hello. Hello. Oh, we just caught you unmuting yourself. You caught me unmute myself. Yeah, there was a wee mute symbol next to your name, right as right as we came back in from the countdown. It all it automatically it automatically uh, mutes you during the countdown. So I didn't. Oh, I just anything. never spotted that before. You just never spotted it before. So uh, uh let's see. That 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 this is this is a, a, a new record as well. We're a minute in, and I haven't even introduced this yet. Uh so just ju ju just because of that. Welcome to episode two of season five of Tight Ten on Titan. Five uh, seasons. In a city of thieves. We never thought we'd get recommissioned by the BBC. We never thought we'd be recommissioned. Four times. Those idiots in StreamYard keep coming back for more. Yeah. I still don't have a StreamYard account. Also, that countdown, I swear, it gets slower every week. It's, I think it gets faster because I was because I, as I've said before, StreamYard have done this thing now where they make all your make all your kind of live streams on Facebook private for some reason. Oh, yeah. So while that countdown's going, what I usually have to do is go into my Facebook account and <laughs> change it from private to people. Whereas I'm just sitting here bored for the whole thirty seconds. The whole thirty seconds, just kind of off. God, see, let, let's get to the action. See, let's get to the action. I proceed to not get to the action for forty minutes. But that is the action. It's the action is getting to the action. It's not about the journey. It was, it was the friends you met along the way. Absolutely. That was I don't. The I don't. I, I don't want to liken the stream to, to the, the. The 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 the, the 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 seminal TV show Mad Men, but yeah. there's so much action and the lack of action in Mad Men that it's a work of genius. I'm going to be there honest, and this this may be sacrilege. I got through half an episode of uh, of Mad Men and then just turned off. <laughs> <laughs> It was Sorry. people talking. It was just people talking, and I got bored. <laughs> is that is that is that is that why you is that why you you don't like Shakespeare? Just, it's no, just people well, talking. I do like a lot of dialogue only films. Like I watched recently on Charlie Wallace's recommendation, um, the Banshees of Inisherin, which is I've entirely. Not seen it. You know, it's great. It, it is basically just like in Bruges, just dialogue the whole way through with like weird yeah. events. But or, or or the hateful eight, which I think we talked about in the stream before, another film that is almost solely dialogue. But Mad Men, I don't know. See when it's a TV show, and I'm starting to watch it, I'm like, is this going to be like four seasons of people talking? I can deal with a, a three hour film, but I can't deal with seven years of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just like, <laughs> someone's got to shoot someone, or or, or, or like skin a dog, or. <laughs> can I deal with seven years? Because basically, Breaking Bad's the exact same, but at least occasionally something gets shot in the face and that. Exactly. At least, like, Breaking Bad has loads of interesting stuff happening. Lots of really Break, cool Break, Breaking Bad's like Mad Men with Crystal Meth. What happens with Mad Men? He's an advertiser and he cheats on his wife. Is that not like... <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Other than that, it's just it's just this, isn't it? Did you, did you, clean, did you, you clean that from the first half of an episode? And then just kind of went, you know what? It's another, it's another seven years of this. Even so, uh, I, I don't care. I don't care how you sell to cigarettes. I don't, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you never had to advertise them to me. I just picked them up. John, John Tonner's popped on. Hoped with a great Christmas and New Year. I was ill. John Connor. John Tonner. Come from the future to prevent this streaming. There's an R7 seasons of Mad Men coming out. He also agrees with you in, in terms of Mad Men. He wasn't a fan either. Yeah, so I have three people currently watching this. Uh, what I will say, I'm going to use this as a perfect time to say, uh, John, John, right now, um, John, as I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to paste it on, I'm going to paste it, I'm going to paste the link here. It doesn't seem to be working, but John is. Just give me a moment. Just, just, just bear with me, right? I'm bearing with you, John. This is like a, this is like sort of mad thing. Just that's going to be dialogue heavy, right? Uh John, John's taking, John's taking uh, part in the Edinburgh Marathon. Oh shit! And he's raising money for epilepsy Scotland. Well done. That's awesome. Uh, I know, absolutely. But uh, I think, I think that, I think that's a, a really cool thing to be doing. And what I'm going to do yeah, is. is because because John's an avid viewer, uh, I'm also going to have posted his just given link on the page. So if anybody's watching this, 
Chris and I do this out of the goodness of our own heart. We don't get any cash for it. But if you've decided to throw kind of any cash through your enjoyment of this, why not give it to John? Because he's actually doing something worthwhile and running a marathon. Right. Funnel it through charity. If we talk to them, there's a good chance we'll get a kickback. Absolutely. We'll, we'll try We'll try and get a kickback for, for Epilepsy Scotland. So uh, so there you go. So John, John, John's, John's running the Edinburgh Marathon doing that. I, uh, I have a question. Any spare spare I have money. A question. You've got a question? When is the Edinburgh Marathon? When, John, when is this Edinburgh Marathon of which you speak? All right. Well, while we run that up to the gallery... <laughs> I just well, know that it's happening in 2023. So John will come back to us with a specific date. Aye, of course it's happening in 2023. Could do it last year. Is it, no, I could do it next year. It could be 2024. It's just getting his charity. Future marathons are available. 28th of May. It's the 28th of May. 28th so, of May. So, so I, I was just wondering if he could maybe do it at his leisure. Just over the course of a year, he could just need to walk 24 miles. <laughs> I know Jesus. it's 26 miles, isn't it? It's 26, 26 miles, miles, yeah. 26 but when you get that, what happens okay. when you've walked 26 miles? Do you just have to stop walking for the rest of the year? Yeah, it has to stop, or else the the then it's rendered null and void, and or he catches yeah, epilepsy. Um, so 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 yes, he's going to do it all in one day, which is which is I wouldn't be able to do that. But he's going to he's going to he's going to run 26 miles in one day. Uh, on Good the 20th of May. And if anybody is. When I get paid, it's 26 I'm miles. Money. This isn't a very big city, and I live next to a running route, so potentially I'm on the route. Chris should pop out and kind of throw water over you, whatever they do. I live next to the river. I can just take a bucket up. Yep, just yep, yep, do that, right? We'll work out exactly where the route is. I might actually come over to Edinburgh for that. For that yeah. day, and we'll, we'll watch together. Uh, we'll go John, John we'll says go. the training's going well. He's watching us with a hot dog and nachos, which is my oh, kind of training. Magic! I love a hot dog. But we should um, we should go along the route and, and, and taunt the runners. Taunt them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taunt them on. You know, where do you Why to run? Taunt John. Are you running in a suit? Is there like an epilepsy suit that you can run in? You know the way, like if you raise money for Fathers for Justice, you dress up as Superman. You... Batman. Yeah, uh, if you're raising money for epilepsy, do you dress up as I don't know, a famous epileptic? I can't think of him. I can't. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. What's know that movie? Any... Panic Room. Is she? Wait, was Jodie she... Foster. Was she diabetic, or was she epileptic? Was she di I always get diabetes and epilepsy mixed up. Yeah. I don't know. I think she was diabetic. Ah, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I love sugar. It makes me sleepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to rewatch Panic Room now, which is possibly no, David Fincher's weakest movie. But who was was um, Jared Leto in that film? I don't know. I know for I think he was one of the I... home invaders. One of the. Yeah, I think he was. I could be wrong. I'll check. I know that Tony Whitaker's on it and Forrest Whitaker's on it. That's all I remember. <laughs> I just I just watched you for a second there struggle to cut through the dead air <laughs> at that really open-ended question. Is oh, it exactly. I, what, that, that's, not uh, what, uh, <laughs> that's not what was happening at all, right? That's not what was happening at all. I considered Googling it and then thought, no. I'm not going to do because I actually thought I'm going to Google Panic Room Wikipedia page and find out definitively whether he's on it. And I decided not to do it because I already did a fair bit. Of, I'd previously, before we'd kind of come on this, I had copied uh, John's uh, just given link so that I could mm -hmm. quite easily paste it as it came up fluidly in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, John, what, 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 other John, John Connor. John Connor. John Connor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> could you Google it, John? Well, put your hot dog just down. Put your hot dog in now. It's just down for a fucking second. And Google Find whether Jared Leto was in the panic room. Please. Panic room. Uh, John has said Elton John has epilepsy, apparently. So there you go. Oh, holy shit, you could dress up as Elton John for the run. Get those big shades, some feather plumes. Cool. 
Yeah. He said he was just going to wear a t-shirt, but just, just a t-shirt. T-shirt. When he, he he's Winnie the Pooh on it. He's Winnie the Pooh on the road. Exactly. And when you run fast on the police start chasing you, I think you should wear more than just a t-shirt, John. You're going to get arrested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you, you can't do that in Germany. Winnie the Pooh's banned yeah. over there. When Winnie the Pooh's banned in Germany? He doesn't wear trousers. I don't know if that's true. That's probably a myth. There's something else for to send up the send up to John in the gallery. Absolutely. We should just we should actually just get we should actually get John involved in us every week and he has to go and check our nonsense while we do it so that we don't have to. Right here in the middle, we'll have a little questions John hasn't answered yet counter. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's up to five, John. Would you hurry up? <laughs> <laughs> Get those hot dog eating fingers into your phone and Google. <laughs> get to it. Get to it. <laughs> Wipe the hey, nacho hey. dust off. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but we, we, we basically created your character in the first episode. And I had I you. I remember. Lottery, Lottery McHorseshoe. Lottery McHorseshoe. And I basically had a, another seven page monologue to That's get right. through. Right. Uh, I'll just double check. One, two, three, four, six. five. Six six and a half pages. This one was, huh. and then we basically got to the we basically got to the the city of thieves, and uh, John, John John's basically called in his partner to go and get his iPad. So, <laughs> so I mean, he has, he, he's on it. He's on it. John, right? He is. He's a proper. He's a he's a proper gallery booth man. He's just like, all right, let's just defer this. <laughs> So Just get my iPad. Send it further up the chain. <laughs> he cl- yeah, he clearly doesn't want to have to like have multiple screens. I'm assuming he's watching this on his phone or whatever. He doesn't want to have multiple screens open, and he's decided uh, to to so that he doesn't miss any of the action uh, to to get he, his he, iPad handy. He couldn't get it handy because he's discovered the joy of getting a handful of nachos and crushing them over your hot dog for texture. And then I have a little amazing. bit of the salsa in as well. I've, I've actually I've actually had that and it's pretty cool. It is good. It is good. Yeah, there's, there's these pretentious food stands that can't just get you a hot dog these days. They have to do something gimmicky like that. Mm. Why well, that's just a gimmick that you take and you go, actually, this is the future of hot dogs. It, it is. Texture goes a long way. What's that thing from Brooklyn Nine Nine? Where he get he, he, there, he's in prison and he gets ramen from the commissary and he makes the noodles. But he says he tells the dude to break a corner off the noodles and crunch it up. And once it's finished, you sprinkle it over it for texture, get a little bit of that's crunch. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. That's, that's also perfection. On the topic that's of nachos, cool. if you tried those, what are they something fuego <laughs> like a nacho? Hold on, two seconds. <laughs> fuego. <laughs> <laughs> He's away, right? While well, Chris is away, uh, <laughs> what are those? What did that say? I can't, I can't even fucking hear what's going on. I'm back. What, what did call? that say? T- Takis, fuego flavor, fire flavor. But then, if you look down here, it's like chili and lime. Ah, I've had I've had takis before, but uh, they weren't. They were a they were they were a hot flavor, but not that hot flavor. John has just come back and said, Winnie the Pooh is actually banned in Poland for no underpants. Close enough. Close enough. It's, uh, the country next to it, so close <laughs> the enough. The country that Germany wanted. Holy shit. Wait, we still haven't, you still haven't got back to us on the on the other thing, the Jared Leto thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he hasn't got back to John, you still haven't answered whether uh, Jared Leto is in um, Panic Room. But I'm, sure he's get, I'm sure he's on it now. I'm sure he's on yeah. it now. Anyway, um, I I I uh, mentioned to you before the before the show that I was um, considering uh, taking a night off because I'm trying to do uh, dry January. Yeah, <laughs> he says taking a meaningful sip of his tea. Uh, uh, I, I was trying to do dry January. I was considering. Uh, I was uh, considering taking the night off because because of an event that happened today, and I'll I'll get back to that in just a minute. John's come back and said, "Yeah, he's, he is in it. His character's called Junior." 
Junior. Uh, he's one of the burglars. Do they ever give burglars a second name? So he's one of the burglars. He's one of the sticky bandits. That's Home Alone too. Yeah, think not... about Panic Room. Uh, there wasn't that sense of whimsy to Panic Room. It was pretty, <laughs> it it like was pretty intense film. <laughs> it, it was pretty intense. I like Jodie Foster. I think Jodie Foster should be in more films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was very good in the in Silence of the Lambs. It wasn't Red Dragon she was in because that was Ed Norton, and then they flipped gender Norton. for Agent Starling. Flipped gender between those. Oh no, that's not what happened at all. Is that not what happened? No, that's not what happened at all. Uh, Red Dragon was the first book. Yes. Uh, Red Dragon was the first book, and the character's called Will Graham, the main oh. protagonist in Red Dragon's Will Graham, who was played by Edward Norton in the film. Yes. Uh, Will Graham doesn't appear in the sequel to Stars and Lambs. The character is Clary Starlin, played by Jodie Foster. But oh. what you're probably thinking of is the fact that she doesn't come back for Hannibal. It's... Uh, uh, which that might be what it is. It's... Oh, it is. I can't remember the, the, the actor's name, even though I really like her. I, I think Red know. Dragon's better than Silence of the Lambs. I think Silence of the Lambs is great, but I really like Red Dragon. What's the name of it? Juli Juliet... Juliet Lewis? It's not Juliet Lewis. Uh, no. I can't, I, I can't remember. She's in Magnolia. <laughs> she's in Boogie Nights. She's... Oh, we going to spend this whole, this whole episode just trying to remember who was in films. I can't I remember her name because I really like her. All right, I am actually just going to Google it. I'm not even sending this one up the chain. I, I, I want this sorted. It was uh, ha Hannibal it's, it's or Hannibal. Hannibal and it's, uh, that's going to annoy me. Is this the TV show Hannibal? No, no, the TV show Hannibal. The TV show Hannibal, the main character, and that's Will Graham, who was the character yeah, yeah. Red Norton. Julianne, Julianne Moore. Moore. There you go, John. Just Julianne she Moore. does look a bit like Jodie Foster, to be fair. So it's Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Yep. But, but Red Dragon was actually a remake of a film in the 80s called Manhunter, which which uh, Hannibal Lecter was played by Brian Cox. So there you go. Professor Brian Cox? Not Professor Brian Cox, the Scottish actor <laughs> Brian Cox. <laughs> what, what a woeful miscast that would have been. Was he not in a boy Imagine. band or something oh. fucking years ago? Yeah, he was. He, he, he wasn't. He wasn't in the. He wasn't in the eighties horror film Manhunter. Uh that would have. That would have been. That would have been a terrible casting. Uh, you know, fair play to you, Brian Cox. I love you dearly, but I. I, I think. <laughs> imagine getting that phone call because of that. Yeah. This kind of got because he was in. Was it D Reem? He was in. D Reem. Yeah, I've just looked it up. That's what I was. And then, he was in uh, Dare as well. <laughs> Imagine because in the eighties as well, he's probably still living at home. Brian, his mum. Brian, there's something in Hollywood in the phone for you. <laughs> <laughs> what Brian, you in the, he was born in '68. I mean, he would have been the right age for it. Yeah. Well, no, if, if, if Brian Co uh, Professor Brian Cox was born in 1968, so so when Manhunter yeah. came out, he was probably 17, 18, right? <laughs> Brian, what is it, mum? <laughs> Dino De Laurentiis is in the phone for you. <laughs> I couldn't picture Brian Cox as not, not not obviously I couldn't picture Professor Brian Cox, but I couldn't picture <laughs> Brian Cox playing Hannibal Lecter. Well, he was the original Hannibal Lecter. He did it before. He did it before. And, yet, and yet, only you remember. I'm sure Brian Cox probably remembers as well. I don't know. I mean, he's old now. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, he's yes, 76. Yes. There you go. Good God, you're right on the ball now, aren't you? Yeah, well, you know, we had a... I, if I ever, ever, ever uh, win the lottery and become a multi-millionaire, it's going to be my dream to redo Manhunter with Professor Brian Cox. Do you think he'd be up for it? Just for my own personal use. I'm just going to... Just in your front room. You're not even going to record it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna make. I'm just gonna get them to reenact it and love them. <laughs> I'm just. I, 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 I need to get back. This is a problem now that I've got off. I've now got off on this tangent where I'm imagining the Brian Cox household after he receives the news. 
that he's going to be in Manhunter and like just over Sunday dinner and his mum's carving a roast. Just we got some nice news today, Father. Brian's going to be in a movie. I don't know what I said that is. A movie? Reggie? Uh, <laughs> I feel like we've gone off on, on, a, on a mega tangent. And, and we're not even the first few, we're probably not even the first people to make that kind of oh imagine if Professor Brian Cox appeared in a you know, uh, I'm sure we're not the, the, the first people to do it, but it doesn't matter because it's entertaining me now. And, and I don't I don't think either Brian Cox or Professor Brian Cox are enough in the kind of and in, in the public eye for somebody to do 22 minutes on us like we have. We haven't done the full 22 minutes on it. But also, now that, we've, now that we've thought oh, of yeah. this, I have a, a subroutine running in my brain trying to come up with other people with the same name that would have would have been funny to swap their roles. Swap I can't right. think of any. That's the problem. It's just, it's just right picking back out there, coming up with fuck all. We're going, yeah, it's going, it's going, it's going to be it's going to be one of those ones that uh, after we finish this, we're going to be firing WhatsApp messages to each other, kind of going, "Why didn't we think of Camilla Goodman, who isn't a real person?" Uh but you know, you know, that, that was just an example. Camilla Goodman, not to be mistaken. Why didn't you about. pick? Why didn't you pick someone that that had a recognisable name? You just went for someone random. You know, Camilla Goodman. Have her swap out for Camilla Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, well, that's, that's exactly what I did there because I could. Well, the problem with not being able to think of it, Edward Norton, the donkey shagger, played play, played by Edward Norton. <laughs> no, but the, 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 the problem with the fact that we can't think of anybody uh, means that when I'm giving you examples of who we're going to do later on, I can't give you legitimate examples. So I had to make some up. No, we have to sit here in silence, dead silence, until we both come up with a separate example. John's already <laughs> come up with one. John's come up with the only other one in existence. Go. Chris Evans. Oh my God. Imagine Chris <laughs> Evans from Imagine the radio. Chris Evans. <laughs> playing, like Brent, playing Captain America. Captain America. <laughs> Imagine Chris Evans uh, on the fucking radio, <laughs> like the American one. I would, I would listen to that. Hmm. I would actually watch. I would watch Captain America. With Chris Evans in it as well. That <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that too. I would watch the hell out of that. It's just kind of like, are you sure it's me you want? Well, I mean, it says Chris Evans. All right, but... <laughs> I'm just following orders. Speaking of following orders and making decisions, should we should we dust off the old book? We, we, we'll dust off the old book in a minute because there, there are two things need to happen first. First, I need to tell you why I nearly didn't. Oh yes, of course. We, we got my... so we got so off on a tangent that we forgot we to go on the first tangent. Uh we'll, we'll do we'll do we'll do that. We'll 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 mention why I nearly fell off the kind of dry January bandwagon. Uh but first we've got a message in through Twitch. The way. Views, followers, views, chatbots. The price is lower than any competitor. The quality is guaranteed to be the best. Auto on. Incredibly flexible and convenient order management panel. Everything is in your hands. Turn it on, off, customize. Go to dogehype.com. So and and sorry, who was that? that? Who was that from? What was the name? It's from somebody called X Brechizbsk. Yeah, well, a ton less, a ton less as uh, as, uh, as tempting as that offer is, <laughs> I think we're gonna have to tell you to fuck to, off. Exactly, them. <laughs> wait, wait, sorry, was there a thing? Dogehype.com. Doge hype. Doge hype. Doge. It's actually, do you know what? It's actually dogehype dot 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 com. Dot dot. There's no dot. I thought that the website was dogehype.com, but it's not. Perhaps it's so x, dogehype.com x. But here's the thing that's about that. Dot, so here is a little like, a history lesson, internet history lesson. We all know what Doge is, right? That little Shiba, Shiba Inu meme that goes around the place. You know, that's it's like a little. Hey, John Tonner. 
Um, it's a, it, it was a little Shiba Inu meme, right? Uh, yep. Then Dogecoin was a cryptocurrency that got invented off the back of that meme, and then people invested in it, and then it flopped because it's a fucking meme. You can't base your currency around a meme. Uh, Who can? So I'm suspecting that if we went to dogehype.com, it would be a, some sort of crypto tracker for Dogecoin, which is dead. It's like, like Bitcoin is worth like, I don't know how much. I'm just definitely not going to do it. But I mean, to be honest, if it's dead, then maybe now's the time to buy. I am. Hold on. You're supposed to buy low, sell high. No, no, no. I'm going to go to Doge. I'm going to type Doge. Out. <laughs> right. Oh, Where my God. Yo, all... they actually have a the review bot platform. There you go. They're not nothing to do with Dogecoin. They are literally right. a... Ah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to artificially inflate your your viewer account? Yeah, I don't see. I don't. I don't quite understand that. Maybe that's the thing. Why? Why would you want to? Why would you pay money to know that you're not being watched by real people? People that do that are the same people that, when they were a kid, they got all their action mans or Barbies and they lined them up on their furniture and then they performed for those. <laughs> For those fucking dolls. That's essentially what that is. Don't do that. It's basically just wanking in front of your toys. Yeah, well, I mean, we've all done that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they're always there, right? They're always there <laughs> looking at you with their glass eyes. What is it? it? Reminds me of that Frankie Boyle point where he's like, until you are a father, you will never know what it's like to be caught having a wank by a Furby. <laughs> 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 Those things are cursed when the batteries start running down, they are cursed creatures. Oh, they're no, oh, they're they're horrific. <laughs> I got a, I, I got a Furby for, for Morgan uh, uh, years and years and years ago, and oh it was the worst decision I've ever made in my life. Even worse than actually having children. Yeah. And that's a big one. That's one of the big Which never thought it is an extension. Of the mistake of having children, like buying a Furby on account the fact you'd never have bought one for yourself. But yeah. uh, so it's definitely built upon that original bad idea, but it's still some. Anyway, sorry, right? I'm 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 deviating again. Deviating yes, again. give us give, uh, give us Dawn's story. Fell off my, I nearly fell off dry January bandwagon because I, I was nearly involved in a three car collision earlier. In my car, oh, shit. which is the best place to have a three car collision. Uh, and yeah, yeah, car. you don't want to be not in a car <laughs> during that. If there's very much cars, acts as a protective shell. <laughs> yeah, if there's if there's three cars about to collide with one another, and you're going to be involved in some way, it's probably safer to be inside uh, one of these kind of metal boxes than just imagine just being in the center of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're. Your head would go into orbit. If you pop off there like a champagne cork when they all when they all hit you at once. Yeah. So so luckily that didn't happen. But what what it was was I was I was I was driving driving along driving along a road and then uh, just as you do and then there's two two kind of small side roads and as I'm driving along the road this car just comes out the side road just flies out you know. No visual, no visual, just flies out. You know, obviously the lines indicate that I have right of way. Yeah, Jesus. It's flying out of nowhere. Basically, I've got no chance of stopping. You know, I'm in a, I'm in a kind of main road, so I'm probably going about 30 miles an hour. He's in a smaller road. He's also going at 30 miles an hour. I should have at least, at the very least, slowed down because, mm -hmm. you know, the lines indicated that I had the right of way. But he didn't. He just went like that and then just went and just went right in front of me and we both hit our brakes kind of at the same time. And as I hit the brakes, I also kind of just swerved slightly out of his way. Oh. Like that. So I must have missed him by that. And I'm not even exaggerating. I'm oh, still shit. now in awe of it. and nearly plowed into a car that was sneaking out the other side. <laughs> Fuck. This car's doing this. This other car's kind of going, can I get out? And I just narrowly miss him and nearly hit this other car. Holy shit! Like that. Um, 
absolutely shaking, just like didn't know what to do, just kind of freaked out. Everybody's kind of looking at each other. Nobody peeps a horn or goes kind of, oh, you fucking stupid bastard. Uh, which, to be to be honest, if anybody had the right to do it, it was me. Everybody yeah. else in that scenario was in the wrong. So I don't, no. you know, you know, you, when you sometimes get these bullshit guys that just go, "Are you fucking prick?" Even though he's no. like completely in the wrong. Nobody did that. I think everybody was just slightly in shock, and then no. we just all kind of, you know, I just continue. I, I just kind of drove, drove round them, and then just kept kept going, left them kind of behind me. Don't know what the fuck they did. I just moved on, and I was just thinking, I need to just get a look at them. Well, look at them, but I mean, to be honest, it could have been anybody now. Mm, I didn't stop to, to look at, you know, it was it was a big black car that would have caused more damage to me than I'd have caused to them. Uh, Did you go in slow that's... motion? It, it just, it just I, you know, I, I was I was I was, I was talking I was, I was talking to one of my friends about it uh, shortly afterwards, and I said to her that it's one of those situations that if you see it happen, see, because I've seen stuff like that happen before. <laughs> And you, you, your initial thought is, if that happened to me, I would never have been able to react the way that that driver reacted. Mm. You know, you do, you do, you. I don't, I don't think you, you kind of appreciate just how automatic pilot you go. Because if yeah, I'd the, watched the, that happen, I'd, I'd have said, "There's no." If that had happened to me, I'd have hit that car. There's no way I'd have avoided that. That driver, that driver is just a much better driver than I am. Whereas mm. it happened to me, and it had happened before I knew what was going on. Yeah, yeah. You, you, did you just kinda... did you did you experience that thing where time seems to slow down? Absolutely. Do you know Do you know what that is and why that is? Because it's... of the matrix, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, you're quite right. No, it's because your uh, heart pumps your brain full of oxygen to increase. Uh, information processing speeds and right, okay. your brain with heightened information processing is slower, appears to be slower than your natural yep. perception because you're just getting so much more like done, so much more observed in a small amount of yep. time, which is why you're able to react uh, that quickly without having to think. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't even hit the reactions like that. Don't hit your brain. They go straight through yep. your speed straight to your spine and then back out because it's, it's wow, a total that's reaction. Wow, that's happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's faster. If you don't have to think about it. I thought I was having a heart attack after it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's why we don't function at that all the time because afterwards... Yeah, no, like, well, I've, 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 I've <laughs> actually been told, I've, I've been told uh, after my heart attack by a um, cardiac psychologist I've gone to that my body, one of my biggest problems is the fact that my body is constantly on a kind of fight or flight response. Huh. So like, I, and that was I, like I, taken I, up to eleven. Yeah, basically, I would. Yeah, I've just been told that you know the best thing I could do is just chill the fuck out. I mean, they didn't <laughs> oh. word like that, but they they said that you know um you know just my brain's constantly always kind of on edge, expecting something to go fucking horribly wrong. But anyway, right, I, I feel like we're deviating from the point. What 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 basically happened was I drove on, and then my my first instinct was I need to park the car because I should hmm. not be driving because I'm fucked. And I was like, oh! And then I was driving down the street and it was yellow lines. And I should have just parked the car. Yeah. I should have just parked up in yellow lines. But I just, double yellow lines. But I just went, I can't park there. It's double yellow lines. <laughs> and I kept going. And then the next set of like, there was like par car parking spaces and they were all full. Yeah. And then suddenly I got to traffic lights. And then I was just kind of going, right, I can sit here for a second. Then they turned green. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Drove on, <laughs> went to the next lights. They were green. And I just kept going. And I was practically, uh, uh, I, was picking, I was picking Scott up from after school. And I was practically at the after school by the time I'd found a potential parking spot. And I went, well, I'm <laughs> just going to get him. And I, I, <laughs> Typical and class it was just it's one of these weird situations where it was a bad thing that the lights were all in my favour. The whole job, I was like, I just need to stop. I'm going to die. Uh, <laughs> and I was just like, and now, 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 later on, I've just started to feel a wee bit. I, can, I don't know if I've, I did something when I, yeah, I don't think I had like whiplash or anything, but but my shoulder just doesn't quite feel right. Just I don't, I don't know you, if I just kind of. Yeah, you probably you probably just triggered that what you call it, hysterical strength. 
which is that, yes. that thing where like where like mothers lift up fridges and stuff. But the reason the reason that that can happen and the reason potentially that you're hurting right now is that your sort of brain with pain and stuff places limitations on how much exertion you can put into your muscles basically to stop them from tearing from overuse whenever yeah. you're in a fight or flight situation you override that and you can you can literally break your arms lifting things and you won't feel it yeah you feel well, it well, after. I, haven't, I, haven't <laughs> I just feel a wee bit a wee bit of an ouchie yeah, you probably just uh, went Amy like Gorin, instead. Amy Gorin's on has just said, "Is this Top Gear? Where's all the warlocks and shit?" Which <laughs> maybe I get time, time for us to get on with the show. Uh, let's get on with the show. Put your hot dog down and listen up. Put your hot dog down, listen up. Absolutely. So, uh we've already. <laughs> we're not going to get much further, are we? So we've got twenty. We've still got twenty-three minutes of top quality. It's better can, than our average. That's true. So that's why I nearly broke my dry January covenant. And didn't and stuck with tea. Tea to relax yeah. your sore muscles. Exactly. Right, let's do this because Ian McDonald wants warlocks and shit. And shit. And we've already yeah. given him 37 minutes of shit, so time for the warlocks. Let's get these warlocks. I don't even know if there's any warlocks in City of Thieves, but let's find out together. It's got to be. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to read. I'm not going to reread the seven pages. Oh, thank Christ! <laughs> uh, but I will. I will. I will reread the point that got us up to your decision that you had to make. Your first sure. choice. And the very first City of Thieves. Let's do it. The walk to Port Black Sand, which is the eponymous city of thieves, uh, takes you west some 50 miles across plains and over hills. That's a hell of a walk, isn't it? I think we mentioned mm -hmm. that last week. Fortunately, without any harmful encounters. Eventually, you reach the coast and see the high city walls surrounding Port Black Sand and a cluster of buildings projecting into the sea like an ugly black mark. Ships lie anchored in the harbour and smoke rises gently from chimneys. It looks peaceful enough. And it's only when the wind changes that you smell the decay in the breeze to remind you of the evil nature of this notorious place. Just as well, because imagine it just looks nice enough and it just turns out it is a really nice town. Yeah, it's a nice place. Long Following the dust. Oh, sorry, end, the end. It's the, <laughs> the only chance you've got to complete the quest. You know, it's just it's a nice town. Uh, following the dusty road north along the coast of the city gates, you begin to notice fearful warnings. Skulls on wooden spikes, starving men in iron cages suspended from the city wall, and black flags everywhere. As you approach the main gate, a chill runs down your spine and you instinctively grip the hilt of your broadsword for reassurance. At the gate, you're confronted by a tall guard wearing a black chainmail coat and an iron helmet. He steps forward, barring the way with his pike, saying, Who would enter Port Black Sand uninvited? One of my two voices I employ. Uh, through this is I either... want sounds like this. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. It's just gonna go. Who would enter Port Black Sand uninvited? Or who would enter Port Black Sand uninvited? <laughs> there it is. Port Black Sand. <laughs> and we will go with the kind of gruff one. Who would yeah. enter Port Black Sand uninvited? State the nature of your business or go back the way you came. And your choices were to tell him you wanted to be taken to Nicodemus. It was some bastard that we talked about the seven page prologue. Tell him you wish to sell some stolen booty or attack him quickly with your sword. That was your it would be voice. it would be the work of a of a optimist or a psychopath to at, the, at this early stage in the game with our terrible stats be like, ah, let's just start a fight with the with the police at the front door. Absolutely, the Rosals. Uh also. Who? What city is invitation only? That's a, that's a fair question. Yeah, it's, it's like who dares come to our city? With who dares come? Who dares come to Glasgow? 
Imagine someone, like going over someone at the gates of Glasgow checking. <laughs> checking Imagine ideas. somebody going over to Edinburgh for the fringe and who dares come to who dares come to Edinburgh in August during this large fish to period. <laughs> All right. Well, let's not talk about this. I feel like we Nicodemus should. Nicodemus is on the underbelly from the fourth and eighteenth inclusive. Nicodemus sounds like someone that sells tobacco. Shackademus really tribute band. He is also reminding me of Sam Demas from Bill and Ted lore. Sam Demas, California. Sam Demas, hi! Wild I'd, Stallions! Well, I introduced the kids to Bill and Ted for the first time relatively recently and they loved it. Ah, it's brilliant. Oh, brilliant yeah. films. Except the part of the new one's shit, but let's not get sidetracked with films again. I've still not seen the new one. We'll watch the new one and then we'll decide. People just said don't bother. People also told me not to watch the new Matrix film, and it turns out they were right about that as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, fuck, I had something. I nearly said, and I'm sure it'll be the same with the new Joe Wicks film. I realised that I actually meant John Wick. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'd watch that. He's a lovely lad. Lovely ethical you lad. Dog. <laughs> my my brother works out to, to Joe Wick still. It's yeah, he's, he he works out to Joe Wicks and last week sure he was out clapping for carers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Right. Let's car, talk right? about here. I am here to fence. Here. I'm here I'm here to fence stolen goods. Let me in. You get you, you, is that saying? That's it. I'm not going to tell him take me to the take me to the baggy merchant. I'm going to tell him I'm here to fence stuff because I'm a thief in the city of thieves. Take me to who? Exactly. That Nicodemus isn't the bad guy. The bad guy is Zan Barbain. I know it's always someone with a Z in their name is the bad guy. It's yes. never not been someone with a Z in their name. You you want to tell him that you're going to sell some stolen booty? Yeah. Let's do this. Right. You tell the guard that you wish to sell some silver chalices that you sold from a tavern in Silverton, which is the best place to steal silver chalices, Silverton. Legendary for its silver, Silverton. And that you will pay him a gold piece for his vice as to where to go for the best price. The guard looks at you suspiciously, saying, let me look at these chalices in your backpack before I admit you. This is pretty hard work, isn't it? Hmm. Wait, hold on. He's the police. He's just like, I'm here to sell stolen goods. And he's like, right, awesome son. And then I oh, think I a that. second, if if he doesn't care about that, why does he care about guarding this place? It's like, buddy, you know. need to. <laughs> he's picking his battles, this guy. Yeah, he's he's going to die in this hell. Uh, your choices <laughs> now are to tell him that you know the chalices are cursed and they should only be examined by a mage. It's a good one. Or I have to remember that. Run past is that if only you could use that as excuse. Imagine that and work just kind of going, well, where are you going? Where, where are you going, Chris? Just walk you know, you know when you walk about offices just with a sheet of paper to look busy. You oh, yeah. up, so where are you going, Chris? Well, I've got to give this report up to finance. Well, let me see it. Well, do you know what? This report is actually cursed and can <laughs> only be examined by a mage. All right, on you go, my man. <laughs> it's fine. Well, let me get in touch with the mage department. I'll get it exactly. That's good. Kind of, this is cursed and can only be touched by somebody that works in finance. Sure, sure. Um, what's her name? Fucking Goja from from Mages away on holiday. I'll maybe have to send this to the email alias for Mages and see if they get back to me. I it probably won't be back today though, sir. Exactly. They've they've got they've got their own they've got their own kind of shared mailbox. Somebody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, maybe off site will be able to look at your your cursed item sometimes. So anyway, that's your choices. I feel I've gone off on a tangent. Choices are: tell them you know the chalices are cursed. They should all be examined by a mage. Try and run past them or attack them with your sword. <laughs> We've never had that as an option before. Can I just say, in five seasons and well, four seasons, four books before this. We have never had the option when faced with an obstacle to go, do you want to just try and juke past them? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's an absolute red letter day, isn't it? You should you should 
they should have that in more books. Like, do you know what? Just because I respect, I respect the attempt. I want to joke past him. <laughs> just be like, yeah, you're boring. You know, I'm away. In. <laughs> Ian McDonald's just said that he's genuinely going to use the examined by a magic's use when he's wondering about work. Yeah. I, I said, we're on to something here. It's really good, yeah. It's quite good as well because statistically, because because I obviously get obviously get analytics on this after people have watched. Uh and <laughs> statistically, uh line managers are less likely to watch this stream, so they won't even know. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they mine does. They want, they, I am they, a line manager and I'm on the stream. The stream does that. Yeah, that's, that you, you, you never watch it. Oh, that is true. I've never uh, watched this. So, 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 so line, line managers are statistically less inclined to watch Titan 10 on Titan. Therefore, you know we've just come up. We've just come up with the ultimate office hack. I hate that phrase. Here's a I hack. Something deep in the vault of my brain has just been pulled out by that. So do you know? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Ralph Little? Ralph Little of uh, Death and Paradise fame. Uh, and, and, uh, would you call it the Royal Family? Yes, he's yes. in the Royal Family, right? So I remember watching, I can't remember why I was watching this. It was on BBC Three. You know, when you're waiting for the good stuff to come on on Is BBC Three. Two Pints of a Pack of Chris, was he in that? Yeah, yeah, he was in Two Pints of Lager a Pack of Chris. However, it wasn't an episode of Two Pints. I've watched episodes of Two Pints of Lager. It is, eh. but um, there was a documentary, like like do you know, like a behind the scenes thing was on. I think maybe the season had finished on BBC Three, and they thought, well, fuck it, we'll throw this special in. And the special was about you know just talking to all the actors and stuff that were involved in the show and being like, and they asked yes. Ralph Little, they asked Ralph Little, <laughs> would you watch Two Pints of Lager? <laughs> And he said, he said, no, but then I'm a bit of a comedy snob. And it's like, <laughs> it's like That's way dope. to fucking, way to just like hack apart your entire writing team in one sentence. It's just like, oh, this, this show's shit. <laughs> is, is that your way of saying that that's why you don't watch this because you're just a bit of a I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a of a stream snob. <laughs> you're, you're, you're you're also ironically technically part of the writing team in this since we kind of cuff it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's well, true. Uh, just just in case anyone was wondering, all of the lines that we come out with on this, apart from the stuff that I read out on this book, hasn't hasn't been in any way, shape, or or form. Imagine if this was scripted. Imagine if we sat down every week and went, and 48 minutes in, we'll start the quest. If the show was scripted, we would be maybe the best actors in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to be. Have We'd to absolutely have either. to be. But uh, it's not, and we're not. We're both shit. We are, but we are, but we're both shit writers and shit actors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come see us perform. Uh, Speaking of, exactly. Go ahead. Go ahead. I am Go I am planning. Well, I'm going to say it on stream so that I'm locked into it. But as a New Year's resolution, I suppose I plan to get back to comedy. It's been at the end of this month. It'll have been one year exactly since I last did a gig, and I am ready, ready well, to go. But I will be, I will be performing under the name Lottery McCorsh. <laughs> Absolutely, I would. I, I, I would hope for it. I would love. I'd love to have. I'd love to have you on uh, in the junkyard. That would be great because yeah. because that's so, Laurie McHorshoe so, is a very offensive leprechaun character. Yes, so is. I can't wait to see him in action uh, because we've not seen him in action here yet. Um, uh, it's probably as good a time as any to say that uh, Tight Ten and Tight will be moving to. Uh, as if, as if we've ever managed to technically do this anyway, we'll be moving to to, to three time month because the first Tuesday of every month I'll be I'll be uh, hosting uh, the the junkyard. I'll be hosting the junkyard in Hamilton. If we get any if we get any local local viewers, I'll be I'll be hosting the junkyard Hamilton. Ian McDonald, who's who's watching the stream right now, uh, currently hosts one of the nights in the junkyard too. I'm sure he'll leave details in the in the stream, uh, Ian telling you, Ian McDonald, an excellent I'm doing, I'm doing the first Tuesday of the month. I think Ian does the second Tuesday of the month. Yeah, uh, more, more you can check. Ian, Ian's also 
sorry, sorry for the. Well, I'm not going to apologise for this, but Ian also has a has a YouTube channel where he uploads uh, a lot of shorts of, of puns, and he's written some some pun books. He also didn't yeah. um, expect us to be promoting him <laughs> when he came yeah, yeah, and joined the stream. Been... Ian, Ian has, you're absolutely right, Ian has uh, released a book. Here we go, Ian, this is all about you. I bet you're glad you came on. Ian, Ian, Ian hosts the, the, the second Tuesday of the month in the junkyard. He also, he does buzzwords uh, at the second yes, Tuesday of the month. I've performed on that, actually. Somewhere else, but I feel, like, I, I, I feel like I don't have enough information about that to actually say right now. But he has I, I have performed, performed on it. I've performed on it. The way it works is you, it's, it's mostly uh, one-liners. Uh, I was a one-liner comic myself. And um, there are the audience pay in, and they're each given a list of buzzwords. And if they get all the whoever gets the most, or I think if you get all, if the comedians have said all of the buzzwords on your sheet, you win. You get a wee, you get a wee prize. In fact, That's my pal, cool. my pal won when he was on. Did you? Did you? Did Did you somehow kind of? Your pal was per so the comedian that says yeah. all the words gets such that. a good one liner writer that my pal, <laughs> my pal had a list of however many buzzwords he gave to me, and off the cuff, I just came off with 20, 20 buzzword related one liners. <laughs> uh, Ian, Ian, Ian said that he's happy that we're advertising this to one other person, but it's appreciated. But I don't think Ian appreciates that actually we usually get over 100 people watching this on rewatch, so. So there you go, Ian, just because, just because it looks like there's only a couple of people watching it live right now. Right now, on on Twitch, there's four people watching it live. Uh, I can't see how many people are watching That's it on more Facebook than I expected. <laughs> on, on YouTube. But there's, we, usually have, we usually have over 100 people watching it on Rewatch. So, mm -hmm. so there it's you not, go, Ian. It's, so. it's not much, but it's honest work. <laughs> As it's not much, but it's honest work. And also, stop looking at gift horse in the mouth because I was about to also mention the fact that um, uh, Ian has also written a book of puns called yep. Misunderstood, and it's available on on it's, it's available on Amazon for definite. But I think it's available uh, in, in in other retailers too. And the last time I saw Ian, he signed a copy for me. And oh, that's very there you nice. go. So I've got a signed copy of Ian's Ian's book. So so. I think we should get us try and get a signed copy of, of City of Thieves or one of these books. We need to well, get in touch with that writer. We should try and get Ian McDonald to sign one of our fine fantasy books as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because we couldn't as a stand-in for the original writer. But sign the original writer's name, please. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh Ian Ian McDonald just said that you could be more fucking wrong in your description of buzzwords, but well done anyway for trying to. Is so, that not right? Uh, has it changed I since I did it? I did it like I three, two or three years ago. More, I'm assuming that he knows. Well, um, he knows, but that's what that, that was my memory of it. But then I wasn't playing it; I was performing, so I don't really. We were trying to do a good thing, and now Ian's passively aggressively. Uh, yeah, try to do a good thing. Try to advertise the show. <laughs> uh, if you if you can go to one, if you can go if you can go to one, if you can go to one uh, junkyard show a month. Uh, make sure it's mine and no you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I will say no more on the subject. <laughs> exactly. No, I, no, I've, no, honestly, uh, Ian, 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 Ian's, a, Ian's a, a lovely fella. Uh, lovely fella. And I think that if we were having this conversation face to face, you'd be able to sense the irony in the words. But because I'm just reading them, I'm just going, you buy a prick, aren't you? <laughs> there you go. Anyway, Amy Dawes says, "Come along the second Tuesday of the month to find out how it is, and there's no puns involved." So there you go, Ian. Slightly, so Ian's come right back and said, "Come along, second Tuesday of the month in the junkyard. The first, the uh, are you not supposed to be doing it tonight, Ian? <laughs> Today's the second Tuesday of the month." <laughs> <laughs> No, no press. He's like, imagine if he just went, oh no. <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe he's sitting in, maybe he's sitting in junkyard and maybe he's in the junkyard watching us. But uh he's he, so so I'm um my, my my first my first show is the seventh, seventh of of February. Uh, I'm assuming Ian's next one will be the fourteenth. The fourteenth it's back first the sorry, they've taken January off. 
So Stevie's doing a night on the thirty first. Then I'm which I'm 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 performing on as well as is Ian. Uh, so there'll be no tight ten then either. So we're doing the thirty first. Then I'm doing the seventh, and then Ian's doing the fourteenth. So there we go. And I think That's Amanda cool. Horsey's doing the twenty first. But anyway, we'll we'll have more on that as we know it. This is turning into an advertisement uh, for the junkyard. Let's get going, right? Uh, so you want to try and run past the guard into the main street. Imagine if you get killed here. Oh, fuck it. Let's just go to the next book. <laughs> we'll start <laughs> season six. Right, let's do it. As the guard realises what you're doing, he thrusts his pike at you. Test your luck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. That was the worst. How is that okay. luck? Before we test your luck, Ian McDonald's just said, that's how shit the gig tonight is going. He's actually watching this pish instead of the acts. On stage. <laughs> well, there you go. On, it's, it's on stage watching us. Right, so you have to test your luck. If you're lucky, right, so your luck's eight. So you need your own two dice. Eight. You need to do, do you want to do the usual one where you, you roll a dice? And I roll uh... a dice. Aye, they've got some dice here. Let me just. <laughs> you know what's a nerd when there's when there's dice close at hand. I haven't even prepared for this, and I've got dice close. So Actually, your, luck, your, your, your luck is eight. I'm rolling a dice. You're rolling a dice. Have you got one? I, I've got a box. Two seconds. I'm going to show you this box as four. well. You roll it's one nice, in the meantime. Keep the, keep it's the nice to know you're organised, right? I'm rolling one in the meantime. I won't tell you what it is. But I've rolled my dice. I've rolled my dice. Exciting. We'll find out. So when I lived back in Ireland, we had a pal who was into wood burning and they burned me a dice box that looks like a tuxedo, which I'm showing now, but John can't see it because he doesn't give a fuck. But uh, they made me a ah. little tuxedo dice box and okay. i found when i went back to ireland there over christmas i found my very first dice set which i haven't seen in years and do i have do i have any six-sided dice yeah i got a few <laughs> excellent all right i'll roll one i've rolled one Fuck. oh geez that's good wait no that's bad. i'm yeah. wanting to roll oh jesus i'm wanting to roll under aren't i i, can't, I just realized I'm what we need additional, we need a, what you call it, floodlights like this. We need floodlights. Oh my God, that's even worse. Oh. There's a six, see? You, you rolled a six? Yeah, yeah, it's very hard to fucking see. Well, I rolled a four. So. <laughs> that's fucking well, worse. Why is that worse? There we go. <laughs> a six. So so I rolled, I rolled a four, so that's ten. So you're unlucky. Uh, yeah, we need to roll low. Of course you I roll low. Six. Where dice roll? Well, well, luck roll. So your luck now drops to seven. Fucking hell! Wasn't it? Wasn't it two plus six to start? Or wasn't it uh, two dice rolls plus six to start with? So we rolled snake eyes for for the luck. Like that. Jesus Christ! So, uh, so you, you basically, so you're unlucky. The pike pierces your arm, and you lose two stamina points. Fuck this so your stamina, your luck's now gone from eight to seven, and your stamina's gone from fourteen to twelve. What, 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 what a great start! Yep. God, the guard is really annoyed and charges at you with the pike. Oh, so now we're fighting. So now you need to fight him. <sighs> Fuck sake! He's got a skill of eight and a stamina of seven, and you have to beat him in less than six rounds. <laughs> or what? All right. Well, you, well, let's go. I'll roll for well, you. You'll find it, right? Is there a good way? Ian I'm just the light needs to be seen by a mage because it seems to be cursed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> let's see if I can set up a system for this. Come on, man. be decent. You can see the mass that is my desk. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you've got a skill of eight and a stamina of twelve and a set of guards. The city guard also has a skill of eight and a stamina of seven. So you're on equal footing. So I'm going to roll for the city guard and you're going to roll for yourself. Correct. I'm just trying to find the best angle for this. That's probably it there. This is like a box of doom almost. That's nice. a 
Oh, hold on, what's the best way to see this? There we go. That's a six. Six. I got four. Okay. So, say guard loses two stamina points. Go again. All right, I missed the box. You missed the box. That's another six. Wait, is there any? Is this a. I got a six as well. I got a six as well. So no, it's not. I thought yeah. this literally thought this was a trick box. Okay. We've now we've now we've now hit two rounds. So remember you need to beat them within six rounds. That's right. Go again. So that's a five. I get a three, right? So it's down to three. So we've now done three rounds and you only need to have twice more. All right. Here we go. We got another five. Another five. I got, five as well. I got a five as well. So oh, this is getting dodgy. <laughs> I'm gonna have four to remember rounds. this. These so was that that was four rounds. So you basically you basically got to win the next two. Wait a minute. Yeah, so you if you if you if you win the next two, that's six rounds, so you're fine, but we'll find out what happens if it goes into seven. So let's do this. Two. One. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Oh boy! No, it happened one more time. Go on. Here we go. Ah, fucking hell! That is a four. A four. I really wish. You know, I got I a five. Have, I got a I five. So have, he hits you. I should own brighter dice. This is, these are really dark dice. That's maybe easier to see. So nope. you're down to ten, and now this is round seven. So God knows what's going to happen now. Here we go. That's a six. A six. He got a two, so you've killed him. You killed him, but you did it in seven rounds. So, oh no. Here we go. If the fight lasts longer than six attack rounds, let's find out what happens. As the guard slumps to the ground, two more armed men appear from the stone guardhouse by the gate. Obviously attracted to the noise of your battle. There's no time to run, so you must fight them one at a time. One at a time? They're very, one very accommodating of them. Yep. Shall we go? Yep, let's do it. The first guard has a skill of six and a stamina of six. The second guard has a skill of seven and a stamina of five. So you've got an advantage of two over the first one, an advantage of one over the other. Well, I roll a six. Well, you, you, I, I rolled a six as well, but that was, that was a no-brainer. We so, got an so you hit that, so. you're down to a four. Go for it. That's a four. He gets a six, so nobody wins. Here we go again. Ah, fucking, let's just go for another dice. <laughs> we dropped that one. This one is a four. You can't even see that four. He got a four as well, so you win. So, down to two. One more hit, he's gone. That's another four. He gets a two, so you killed the first guard, or technically the second guard, but you know what I mean? Uh, oh shit, I just lost my dice. No. So, I've got so many here. That's just so well scripted. I've, I've, I've got more than one as well, but I'm also, I'm also slightly annoyed that I've lost the dice, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll worry about that later. Right, let's go, we've got another dice here. Four. That's why you've got an advantage of one over him. So you got a six, so he hits you. You're down to eight. Shit. You're just standing at eight. That's a three. A three. If you can see. He gets a one. Getting the three. angle on this is impossible. Go on, two more hits and he's dead. Four. Four. Oh, is one. Right, okay. One more hit and he's dead. This is mostly me just troubleshooting the fucking life. Oh! Dun 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 We have a fucking three. A three? Oh. And I got a four, but you've got an advantage of one, so nobody wins that one. Fuck's sake. That's the worst result. Oh, that is a solid gentleman's one. A gentleman's one. You got a five, so your stamina's down to six. Fuck, I'm half dead. Fuck, I'm more guess. than half dead. It's a six, though. A strong yeah. six. Yeah. Can't really win that one. So I got a six as well, but he's dead. 
So your stamina is down to six. Fucking hell. I was at 14 when we started? Yep. Jesus. And I'm back. Let's turn this So that's where we're at. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. So, so you win. You win by the skin of you. You, You've not even entered the city yet, and I've already ha over half dead. Jesus, where? <laughs> oh, trying to put all my dice back in my box, and now I realise I should have left this till after the stream. <laughs> there we go. Through the main gates, you see the rubbish-filled streets of the port are narrow and cobbled. So at the end of episode two, and you're just into the city. The rubbish-filled streets of the port are narrow and cobbled. Old and decrepit buildings line them closely, with their upper stories overhanging menacingly. You've got the choices of heading west down Key Street, heading north along Market Street, or going east down Clock Street. And that might be a good time to finish it. Yeah, I think so. You've got a choice of travelling in certain directions. Ooh, so it's Key Street, Market Street, and Clock Street. Yep. I'm guessing, wait, is that Key K-E-Y or Key K-Q-U-A-Y? Say that again. Was that Key K-E-Y or Key Q-U-A-Y? It's Key as in K-E-Y. Huh. So Clock Street presumably leads to the Clock Tower. Market Street leads to the Market. Key Street leads to the Key Store. Yep. Probably. What I will say is... I don't know. You, you, you might have it written down. I don't think I've written it down. Which potion did you take? And if you haven't written it down, now maybe I get time to lie to you. You, you've got a portion of skill that restores skill points, a portion of strength which restores stamina points, and a portion of fortune which restores luck points and adds one to your initial luck. But I don't know if we got... Did you have it I, written down? I think it was fortune. You went with fortune? Yeah, because our luck was so bad, I thought. We yeah, should go with yeah. fortune, as I recall. Well, I'm trying to find the sheet now, but all I've, I found an old set list with 23 punchlines in it, so that must have been quite early on. I ended up getting that up to 37. So you get the potion of fortune. If I were you, had a lie there and said that there's a potion of strength you went for, but you're an honest man. Oh, I still want the potion of fortune. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. So there we are. Basically, uh, the cliffhanger we've ended on is you choosing which street to go down. Exciting. I mean, that's usually what the cliffhangers are. They're very rarely, like hanging over a precipice they're usually like we get past the precipice because we're excited about it and then afterwards it's like would you like to eat one or two dumplings with your stew <laughs> I imagine yeah just, happy time <laughs> they should do that like i would genuinely play one that is like i know what i just i know what i said about mad men okay <laughs> but <laughs> But I would, I would play one of these where it's just nice stuff happens. But if they had, if they had, if they had like a mad, a, a mad men adventure game, book, saying, would you take on the the the, the cigarette advertising deal, the bourbon <laughs> advertising deal, or the lollipop you, advertising deal? You go bourbon. What part of the manufacturing process would you like to focus in on for your uh, promotion? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know what? I think that if we take anything from this, we should try and make a Mad, Man, Mad Men game book. I'm not dying on that hill, but it's like my pal. But I'm, I'm going to rely on I'm going to rely on you to do. I, I've seen all of Mad Men, right? But I think it would be better if you haven't seen half an episode. Are are the storyline editor? Oh man, that would be great. I, sticking as far from the original text as I possibly can, <laughs> simply by not knowing what that original text is. And you would ask me a question going, is this all right? Is this in keeping with the character? I mean, Chris. People aren't going to complain if I kill off the main character in the first in the first <laughs> page, right? On Draper. Draper? Yeah. I hardly knew her. <laughs> hey! But I'm... 
Right, anyway, on that note, I think that's us. We're, we're, we've gone slightly over time. Uh, I'm going to go and take some. I'm going to go and take some painkillers since I decided uh, not to drink. Yeah, which I'm it's one or the other. That's uh, that's what they don't teach you in school. It's one or the other, kids. Drink or drugs. Drink or well, it's not even drink or drugs. I mean, there, 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 there's definitely as you're older, there's definitely uh, enough room for both, but definitely not drink and medication. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I would argue for me, it's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely, I've definitely calmed down as the years have gone on. I'm sorry, I'm not, no, no, no one to you, no, no, no one to use this to 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 condone drug usage. But but um, so we're sitting here on a Tuesday night playing a game book, talking like going, we're like I'm drink, drinking a cup of tea, uh, drinking a cup of tea and reading a game book, talking as if I'm like some sort of. Right before, right between season five and season six, we'll have season X where we both take MDMA <laughs> for the for the entire duration of each show. I'm up for it. Uh, <laughs> well, well, of course I'm not. Of course. Not. Oh no, it's absolutely fine. Line managers don't watch us. Right. Uh, yes, anyway, on, that, on that note, uh, this is end, this is end of episode two of season five of Tight Ten on Time. This has been Chris Ashworth, and this has been John Carruthers. Good night. Sayonara. Para.